Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Sean and I'm the Nerd Doctor here to help you diagnose what's wrong with your RPG game and here to help you fix it. This video is about what RPGs are and how to play ICRPG. I'll put a timestamp in the description for those of you who are already know how to play RPGs, but if you have friends that you'd like to turn onto RPG games and think that this is a good enough explanation, please hit like, subscribe, and share the videos to those friends. When most people think of Dungeons and Dragons, they think of those classic bunch of nerds who are sitting in their parents' basement playing some weird game all dressed up. And that does exist and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But that stigma still haunts the game today and that can keep players from even trying it or even learning about it or judging it before they have given it a chance. So let me break it down like this. If you like fictional books or movies where you've imagined yourself as part of that universe and also enjoy board games, then D&D is a game you'll enjoy. All D&D is, is a game where you are one of the characters in that story. One person runs the game, known as the game master or dungeon master or narrator, and everyone else plays as a character. You can play as a pre-made character or you can make it yourself. And if you think that sounds hard, it isn't. Because these games really try to make it easy for you to design your own characters so that you can enjoy the game that much more. You decide what the character's backstory is, whether it's long or short, and how they act in-game. You can play as yourself or as someone completely opposite of your entire personality. Once that's all done, it's time to play. And the game is really simple from there. Nearly every decision you make in the game is decided by the roll of the dice, usually a 20-sided die, otherwise known as a d20. Whether you want to hit someone with a sword, cast a spell, persuade someone, or intimidate them, you must roll the dice. The game master picks a number between 1 and 20 based on how difficult he thinks that task is, and your character sheet has abilities on it that you can add to your rolls to make something more likely to work. If you succeed on the roll, the story goes one way, and if you fail the roll, it goes another this is why RPGs are so unique to any other type of game out there. Neither the players nor the game master know what's going to happen, and the games can go on for much longer than one night. You can play a one-shot, which is meant to happen all in one session. You can play an adventure that goes on for a few sessions, or a campaign that can take dozens of sessions of play. Playing the game is like writing your own story as a group. It's been, a, it's been a game that has brought my family closer together as I'm running a session for my family. My family and I, along with my friends, love games, board games, card games, table games, backyard games, video games, even drinking games. If it has some sort of friendly competition, we're interested in it. But aside from the actual game, I can't name you a specific memory from playing any of them other than we had fun or we enjoy playing that game. But I can tell you something that happened in each one of my D&D game sessions that was very memorable and usually absolutely hilarious. RPGs are unique in that they allow you to bring your own creative ideas to the game. So much these days stifles creativity, and this game encourages and nourishes it. D&D is a game commonly used to help kids with learning difficulties to practice skills like social interactions, as there are in-game consequences to those actions, good or bad. Characters can even die in an RPG game. And if you ever watched Critical Role, then you know how emotional and memorable something like that can be. If you've ever been invested in a character in a book or a movie, you know what I'm talking about. This is what is so unique about RPG games, because you never know what you're going to get when you sit down for the game at the table. Any other game, when you sit down at the table, you kind of know what to expect or how it's going to go, but you never know what's going to happen when you sit down for an RPG, which just enhances the excitement. Moving on to the mechanics of ICRPG. Step one, who and what you are. Before choosing anything, it's good to get an idea of a concept of the character you want to play and then let your choice reflect and support that concept. Step two, choose a life form or a race in D&D. Do you want to be human? Do you want to be an elf? Do you want to be a dwarf, a halfling, or something else? Step three, choose your character type, or in D&D, you choose a class. In ICRPG, there are six archetypes with three subtypes for each. The warrior archetype has the slayer, defender, and pit fighter options. The hunter has the quick draw, the dead eye, and the trap expert. The shadow has the assassin, the scout, and the thief. The bard has the battle hymn, the provoker, and the thespian. The mage has the spell scholar, the wild power, and the dark pact. And the priest has the elemental, the healer, and the monk. 
Step four, write a one-line story. Now, this isn't a history or backstory or a past, but rather what is happening right now to this character that brought them to where they are? Why, are, is, this, why is this character adventuring? Step five, core stats. An ICRPG, just like most RPGs, that has six stats, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. D&D also has these six stats. It also has a bunch of skills that relate to these overarching abilities, but ICRPG simplifies it to just these six. Strength for melee fighting, dexterity for ranged attacks, constitution for recovering health and natural defense, intelligence for figuring out problems and casting intelligence spells, wisdom for perception, insight, and casting wisdom spells, and charisma for persuasion and intimidation. You get six points to use for your character to decide how you want to distribute them. Basically, you know, every point you put into ability, you get a plus one modifier to that roll. So if you're trying to roll a strength check to hit someone with a sword, if you put three points into strength, then you can add three to that roll, making it more likely for a certain outcome to happen. Step six, boosting effort. In ICRPG, when you're rolling things like to hit someone with a sword or to unlock a chest or to damage enemies, you're going to roll the ability for the attempt, but you're going to roll effort to see how effective was that outcome. There are five forms of effort. Basic effort, which is a roll of a D4. Weapon or tool effort, which is a roll of a D6. Gun effort, which is a roll of D8. Magic or energy weapons, which is a roll of D10, and ultimate effort, which is a roll of D12. Basic effort is for anything from translating languages to unlocking a door without a tool, and the rest are pretty self-explanatory, except ultimate effort. Ultimate effort is something you get when you roll a natural 20 on your attempt roll, or if you have an ability that gives you ultimate effort for on a specific task. In ICRPG, you get four points to add to your effort roll. So if you're a spellcaster, you want to put those four points probably in your magic effort so that when you do roll magic damage, you deal more damage. Which brings us to step seven. Record any abilities you get from the character type. Next to all of those character subtypes I talked about, you'll see one line about an ability that character gets. So you just write that on your character sheet so you always have it for you to remember. Step eight, choose one starting loot from your type, just like with the one line that that character type will have a starting loot just for that character. And then also choose four basic loot, which is dependent on the setting. So if we're doing a fantasy setting, you'll get you know, backpacks with different gear in them. That you, so you choose what gear. Maybe if you're a spellcaster, you'll choose a spell book to help you record a number of spells for you to keep track of. You get 20 inventory slots to keep track of spells and loot. You can equip up to 10 to be able to actively use, and that's it. That's your starting character, and I'll go through actually how to do that, and I'm going to take you through an example of one of the trials in the ICRPG handbook to show you how it's all played as an example in, in real time. I'll play as the Dungeon Master and as three different characters to show you how the turns are taken and how everything works. Before we start the trial, let's go over the characters. I made three characters for this trial, Kaiser Sose, Zara Vashara, and Rook. For Kaiser, I chose the half-orc life form and the pit fighter class. I gave this type of life form a plus one strength and a plus one constitution. Because he is often in close combat and taking damage, I put four of my six ability points into strength and two into constitution. This gives him a plus five to strength rolls and a plus three to constitution rolls, which is really important for recovery. The plus three from the constitution also adds a plus three to his defense. Defense is calculated as 10 plus constitution plus armor bonuses, but he is going to start off without armor. So his defense is 13 or plus three. The number is important for two things, monster attack, attack attempts and defense rolls. Monsters don't roll to beat targets like players do. They roll against your defense. In this case, a 13. Defense rolls are important for characters we don't, who don't use dexterity as one of their primary abilities. In Dungeons and Dragons, let's say a trap goes off. The game master may call for a dexterity saving throw to see if you successfully dodge it. In ICRPG, you can roll dexterity if it's higher, or you can make a defense roll if you're heavily armored. A good defense roll can determine if your armor takes a hit and leaves you unharmed. But anyways, back to the character sheet. 
You can see I added one of my four effort points into basic effort and three into weapons and tools. He also has two abilities, one where he can add his last damage that he took to the next damage that he makes, another where he can spend 1d4 hit points to add to an additional attack. Next is Zara, the Kawashtar Shadow Assassin. I gave her a plus one con and a plus one wisdom for her life form bonuses and then a plus five to dexterity and a plus one to charisma for her abilities. And then plus four to weapons and tools. Her abilities consist of a surprise attacks, automatically hitting, and she can deal ultimate damage to any enemy that she has advantage on. As a shadow, I gave her lock picks that she, can, that she was able to craft while in prison, just for some flavor. And it's important for this trial. And lastly, there's Rook, the Genasi Dark Pack Mage who I gave a plus two magic effort as a, as a life form bonus and a plus four to intelligence and plus two to constitution. To keep things simple, I started him off with one spell, Arcane Missile, which if he deals one effort of damage, it will ricochet and hit another target, giving him additional effort roll. His abilities consist of Master's Skull that he can summon and drink from storing that stores 12 hit points that he can recover. And... He can sacrifice health to deal equal amount of damage and effort. So those two abilities can be very helpful for him. So there you go. Those are the three characters I'm going to use for this trial example. I'll use the ICRPG initiative, which is either the characters go first or the monster does. And play proceeds in a clockwise order. The order for the players will be the warrior, Kaiser, then the shadow, Zara, and then the mage, Rook. But the players can sit in whichever order they choose if you really want to. If I had a healer, I'd put that person last because they, so they can heal the party before the monster goes. If the first player, the warrior, beats the game master in a straight roll of a d20, the players go first. If the game master wins, the GM goes first. There are a few initiative systems out there, so leave a comment if you'd like to see a video of one of, the, of, one of those ones, and I'll tell you which ones I like more and rate each one. But let's let the trial begin. This is called The Trial of the Grey Hill Inferno. A night of chaos. You are prisoners in the Grey Hill complex. You have no memory of anything beyond the needles, the experiments, and the concrete. Whoever they are, they are using arcane mis machines and glowing goo to make you into a super weapon, and it just might work. That's when the fire breaks out. Let the fight begin. I am going to roll. Hell was, ah, here we go. The target is 10 and the fire is spreading. Break out of your cell within four rounds. Very lucky players they are. The cell requires one heart of effort to break free from, and Kaiser goes first. All right. Rolling a d20 on an attempt, rolls a 10. That's the effort he has to beat, beats 10 easily, and is going to roll effort. He rolls a basic effort, which is a D4, rolls a 2, plus 1 that he has on his uh, ability sheet. That gives him uh, plus 3. So that's uh, one heart of effort is 10, minus 3, so he has 7 left to beat. Next is Zara. She's going to roll dexterity check because she has those lock picks I mentioned. She rolls a 17 and easily beats it, and she's going to roll a tool die, which is a D6. Rolls a five plus four for her tools. That's nine. So she has one. So we have seven, one. Now it's Rook's turn. Rolls an 11. Definitely beats. He's going to roll a D10 because he's going to cast Arcane Missile on the lock trying to blow it, up, blow it away. And rolls a nine. So plus whatever effort he has, which is plus four. So he is going to break out right off the bat, blowing the lock to smithereens with his Arcane Missile. This... Ends that round. There are three rounds left. I'm, I'm using the Essentials deck and the uh, ICRPG Think deck for these cards, just to give you a little bit of scenery for this. Kaiser goes again. Rolls an eight plus five with his strength. Rolls ba basic effort. Two plus one. That's another three. Four left on his cell. Zara rolls her effort or her attempt was an 11. And I think she only had one point left. So the roll is, is mine is new. Definitely going to get out uh, with his, with Rook's turn. He's going to use, take a chance to look around. Rolls the natural one. So he's having, he's, he's panicking a little bit. He's not, he's not having a good time looking around, trying to find a way to escape. This ends that round, bringing us to two rounds left. 
It makes an attempt. Eight plus five, definitely going to going to get through. I think that's going to be plenty. One, oh no, he rolls a one. That's that's two. So uh, he he gets two. He had three left, I believe. So he's still stuck in there. He's not out yet. Zara is also going to look around. Eleven. She succeeds, beats the target of ten. So is Rook going to look around? Doesn't succeed, but she is going to find a a locker with a couple weapons in it, like a, a bow and arrow, maybe a sword. Um, and, and Rook didn't find anything last round for him to escape. He better roll his attempt roll. 18 definitely gets it. And he only had one point left. So guaranteed to get out. So he just gets out. You escape from the cells and are making your way out. The only way through the gate is through the courtyard. And as you approach it, you are halted by weapon 13, a grotesque monster sent to stop you. There's no avoiding it. Kill or be killed. Roll initiative. This is going to be a target 12 to beat this round, making things a little bit more challenging. It's three against one after all, so might as well um, just keep my damage ones here for now. Let's keep things simple. All right, let's roll initiative. So let's see who goes first. The monster, the characters rolls in monster rolls in nine character roll a four rolls a 14. So characters are going to go first. He goes, Kaiser goes first. He's going to charge in and attack with the sword that Zara found. Rolls a 15. Easily beats. Rolls a D6. Five. Plus three. Dealing eight damage to the monster. Zara's turn. She is going to roll her bow and arrow shot. Rolls a 12. Easily beats. Another weapon damage die. Four. Plus four. Kills weapon 13. Easy enough. Good thing they got to go first. After defeating weapon 13, you're able to escape from the grounds where the guards are roaming the hills. Target is still 12. Roll dexterity to remain hidden. Now, in Dungeons and Dragons, they have skills, sub skills for all of these six ability scores, like stealth and everything like that. So you can use these however you want as a dungeon master. I'm going to call, I like me, I'm a little bit traditionalist. So I'm going to call a dexterity roll to see if they stay hidden, but they've got to beat the target 12 to stay hidden. And let's see how many guards are roaming the hills. Ah, oh, just one. They got, they got lucky. There's only one roaming the hills. So they may feel plenty, plenty safe staying hidden in here but let's see let's see. you know all three of them could probably take him out pretty easily but uh let's let's see if they stay hidden so kaiser's roll rolls a natural 20 he definitely stays hidden uh 16 for zara definitely stays hidden and three k- gets found guards alerted they're gonna roll initiative to see who goes first the guard gets natural 20 and is gonna go first He's going to attack him, rolls another natural 20 on one attack. He actually has two and rolls a seven. So 20 and a seven. So that's uh, the, th- the second one definitely fails. Uh, uh, doesn't have any addition to the bonuses and he has at least an 11 AC. All right. So he's going to roll an ultimate damage and he has a sword. So he's going to roll a D6. So four plus eight, that's 12. That is enough to knock Rook down. Now with Rook knocked down, he's going to roll a D4 because he's now dying. He will die in three rounds. Um, and what I'm going to do is, is get the tension up a little bit more. Make these, make these guys make a decision. So Rook's dead in three rounds. I'm going to roll that D4 again because I'm going to say like they're causing commotion. And because of the commotion, more guards will be here in one round. They have one. I'm going to give them one round to make a decision on what they're going to do. And let's say, well, they, they hit well. They could, they could easily, they could leave. They can leave or they can fight. So they, they have one round to make that decision. That's a high pressure situation. But let's just say they're going to attack him. Now, they were both hidden, so they both get a surprise attack. Uh, he rolls an 18, rolls a D6, one. She actually gets advantage for, for it being a, su- a surprise. Definitely doesn't hit, though. One plus, what does he deal? He deals uh, plus three, so he deals four damage to the guy, and she's actually sitting back because she's shooting, shooting from range. He gets to attack again. Two rounds left. For him to survive. Actually, so he can roll a D20. When he's dying on his turn, he rolls a D20. And only if he rolls a natural 20 will he, will he stay awake. So he's got two rounds left before he dies. 
And that brings it back to the guard. The guard's going to move in on Kaiser. He's going to attack twice, 18 and 13. Both of those are going to hit because he's a 13 armor class. Two D6s, three, two, five damage to Kaiser. So he's taking, he's got five, five health points left. And now it's Kaiser's turn. So Kaiser's going to make a hit, misses. She's going to roll a natural 20. So she's going to roll a D6 plus ultimate. And he was already injured. So eight plus five definitely takes him out. But there, and so on, and on Zars or on uh, Rook's turn, rolls a D20, rolls a four. Definitely does not roll the natural 20 he's looking for. They have one round left. Now, one of the ways that you can keep a player from dying, and and thing is, they decided to attack. That took that took one round. Because he's the way you can stop someone from dying is if you use your turn to go and stop them. Stop, uh, go, say say to the character. Um, stay with me. You know, it's, it's, don't die on me. If you say that, the the counter stops and he stay and he stays alive. Now, more guards are going to come because of the commotion. So let me roll another D four, whichever I did with the D four. It's probably in here. Yep, there it is. All right, roll a D four and see how many guards heard the commotion. One. Okay, they got very lucky. <laughs> All right, so this stays at one round. And I'm going to let them roll another stealth check. Now, he's out, so I'm going to let them... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let her roll a stealth check with him to try to hide both of them. Um, and I'm going to give her disadvantage, but she has a plus five to her dexterity. So she might be fine. Rolls a three. So... Isn't able to hide him. Let's see if Zara is. Nope, he's not able to hide either. So another guard comes into play. They they use their turn to stop him from hiding with the end of that round. And so now it's the two of them. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to keep the suspense up in four rounds. However, this time in four rounds, the commotion will cause more guards to come. So attack from Zara. Kaiser, rather, he hits from Zara. I'm sorry. Um, we're going to roll initiative first. Rolling initiative. Uh, these guys go first. Attack from Kaiser. Eight plus five definitely beats a 12. And uh, 11 plus five definitely beats a 12. They're both going to hit. So two D6s. We got a six and a five. Going to take him out. That was the user turn. I'm still unconscious. 17, not a natural 20. Still staying unconscious. That's that turn. That's that round. Three rounds left. Now, they don't have any way to uh, get me unconscious, so they're going to use their turn. They're going to use their, their strength to, to try and carry me out. So he's going to use his strength. Levin beats a, tw- beats a 12 with his strength and assisted. That was cocked. Four. It doesn't really help, but they're able to carry me, or carry a rook, rather, out of the woods to safety. With that round of time, so they they, they they were not within range of the the guards for them to catch him. But that's how that ended. They were able to survive. Maybe they get Rook to to a doctor. They get him to the next town. Maybe what I do is I'll with 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 some time for them in their escape. I'll give him, let's say, uh, I'll give them a timer. I'll say, all right, roll a d roll a d four, and that's how many hours it'll take for him to wake up. So it'll take him four hours. So they'll have to keep him keep him protected for four hours, where he'll regain consciousness. Uh, so that's that's it's another way to do it. You can you can also do it even worse. Like you know, he was dying, so maybe maybe it's days. Roll d four. He it'll take one day before him to wake up, and they've got to they've got to protect him for one day. And that but that'll be the next story. That'll be the the, the continuation of this if you decided to do that. But that's the gist. That's how you play uh, ICR. RPG, perfect example of a trial to show you what kind of goes on. I hope you were able to keep track of the roles a little bit. Um, if you, uh, you know, memorize what, what one of those pictures, what the, uh, I'll try to see if I can't uh, uh, put up a character sheet during some of those things so that you can see what I'm looking at with, with some of these roles with the characters and, and the addition of those things to show you how they're actually working. Uh, otherwise, just, just scroll back to when I show you the character sheets. That way you can see what they're looking like and, and like, you know, what an attempt role is going to be, which is one of the six abilities and what an effort role is going to be, which is 
only rolled when you succeed. Um, you can see that in the very first stage of this, that we did, it was straight attempt. Like, uh, uh, you know, whether you did it or not, um, you hit it in and then you rolled effort. And, uh, but the very last one didn't even need an effort roll. Like you rolled to see, did you stay hidden? Did you succeed in staying hidden or not? And that's it. That's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you did, again, like, share, and subscribe to those people you want to get involved in RPG games or you want to show people more about Index Card RPG. Again, I'm Dr. Sean. I am the Nerd Doctor, here to diagnose what's wrong with your RPG games and here to help you fix it.